Good afternoon and welcome to the Grinnell Prize Award Ceremony and Symposium. Uh, every year for the past five years, we've presented this prize to leaders from around the world who are doing the most innovative work in social entrepreneurship and social justice. When the college created the program in 2010, the goal was to honor people who are modeling the Grinnellian ideal of learning in the service of social commitment. As the program has matured and thrived, we've come to see it as also a powerful way to connect our students and community with exceptional social innovators. The winners teach classes and workshops, mentor students, and increasingly host internships that benefit both the organizations and our causes. It's a distinctive program and a way to extend Grinnell's distinguished history of educating individuals who are prepared in life and work to use their knowledge and their abilities to serve the common good. This chapel itself bears the signs of that history. One of the plaques in the back of the room honors Grinnell students who died fighting for the Union in the Civil War. Another honors the 11 abolitionist ministers who founded the college in 1846. Here at Grinnell, social commitment isn't just an idea. It's not even just a, a core value. It's the essence that courses through the body of our community. As proud as we are of providing a world-class education, this is not a place where we teach unbridled self-interest or sterile scholarship. We believe learning derives its value when married to a sense of social obligation. Some have called this the greater, more complex truth of being a caring, wise, and engaging human. The Grinnell Prize has become a natural extension of this idea and a way to extend it still further. With this in mind, it's a, really a great pleasure to introduce to you the winners of the 2015 Grinnell Prize. These two remarkable young innovators are just starting to make their mark. They were selected from among nominations received from every corner of the globe. And they have led two remarkable organizations that have taken creative approaches to serious global challenges with impressive results. First, Maria Verkin is the creator and executive director of Found in Translation. Maria started Found in Translation in 2011 in Boston to support and train homeless and low-income multilingual women to start careers as professional medical translators. Founded, Found in Translation addresses two challenges, economic disadvantages and racial, ethnic, and linguistic disparities in healthcare. Maria recognized that low-income multilingual women have language skills that could be put to great use. Each year, 20 to 30 women graduate with a certificate in medical interpretation through Found in Translation, and the program is offered free. But the program also supports, uh, supports the students in the form of on-site child care, mentoring, and career placement services. As interpreters, graduates accomplish great things. They help reduce racial, ethnic, and linguistic disparities in the delivery of health care. They help save lives and they help cut healthcare costs by preventing medical errors and improving efficiency. Anyone who has worked in an urban uh, hospital in the recent years can attest to the challenges of having a translator translate every conceivable language that, that is facing healthcare systems now. Um, all too often I remembered having little kids having to translate for their parents in ways that really didn't serve them well or their parents. This is a huge void that Maria's organization is filling. Um, for her innovative efforts to empower low-income women with language skills and simultaneously reduce disparities in healthcare, I'm proud to award Maria Vertkin the 2015 Grinnell Prize. Now let us recognize our next winner. Deborah Ankora is the co-founder and executive director of Golden Baobab. Based in Ghana, Golden Baobab is a literary arts organization that helps African children see themselves in books. 
Deborah was 11 years old when she became aware that the Nancy Drew books that she loved were not the most relevant books to her life in Ghana. When she got to college, she started an organization that shipped American books to libraries across Africa. But she wanted to do more. She wanted African children to see their own faces and their own worlds depicted in books. While still in college, Deborah co-founded Golden Bay Above to inspire African writers and illustrators to create books for African children. One way Golden Bay Above accomplishes this is by offering annual prizes for African writers and illustrators. The winners receive a prestigious award as well as a cash prize. Golden Bay Above also offers outreach programs and workshops to help writers and illustrators improve their craft. And in conjunction with their sister company, they offer literary agent services and publications. Uh, this whole issue was brought home to me recently when our family has friends who live in Vienna and their kids are of African descent. And, and the mother noted that she could not get any books in Vienna that had uh, kids of color in them. And when she went on Amazon to order, they wouldn't ship the books to Vienna. Um, so she couldn't get, so I'm her source now. So I buy regularly and ship over to Vienna so that her kids can see themselves in books that they never ever see in Vienna. This is a huge problem and not just for Africa. Deborah is finding creative ways to help writers and artists and children in Africa connect through books and is expanding into becoming a publisher. Today we honor Deborah Ahankora, co-founder of Golden Baobab with the 2015 Grinnell Prize for inspiring children's writers and illustrators across Africa and helping them create and share wonderful books specifically for African children. <laughs>